in reflow simulation environment with the differentiate between global and local settings. The first category describes parameters which are valid for every project. They can be considered default parameters and they can be found under simulation in reflow's preferences. Since these default settings are not always suitable, it is possible to change them for each project individually. So the global simulation parameters should be seen as a point of reference that can be adjusted to your own needs when necessary. The local or project-based parameters are located in the Simulation Options panel. When you compare both preferences and simulation options, you can see that the parameters are nearly identical. It is therefore enough to focus on simulation options. Let's start with the general page and the min and max substeps values. In computer simulations, a motion is always subdivided into more or less small segments called substeps or time steps. Please take a look at the following illustration to get an idea of the concept behind time steps. The object in this illustration covers a certain distance d within a time t. This relation is called velocity. The object's velocity, on the other hand, depends on its acceleration caused by a force like gravity. The actual change of distance is calculated by reflow internally, and this process is subdivided into small steps. The entire approach is comparable to the approximation of a circle by refining a polygon. The more edges the polygon has, the better the representation of the circle. With time steps, it is very similar. The higher the number of substeps, the more accurate the calculation, because the calculation is closer to an object's real motion curve, and therefore more accurate. But this is only one side of the coin, because the time steps themselves also affect the distance an object can cover. The next slide shows a comparison between simulations with 5 and 25 substeps per frame. As you can see here, the covered distance per step is much larger in the first example than in the second one. When we draw an obstacle into the object's path, it becomes obvious that collision detection might fail because a moving body cannot see the other object. This is exactly the problem researchers have to solve with modern large-scale solvers. Another problem with large steps is that simulations often become unstable because when the calculation of an object's motion path is not accurate enough, it diverges from the ideal curve. Please bear in mind that this concept is only valid for standard particle simulations. With hybrid fluids, the situation is different because this technology uses another so-called implicit approach. Let's go back to the simulation options panel. The minimum and maximum values indicate that reflow does not use a fixed time step, but something between 1 and 300. This method is called adaptive. If possible, reflow works with rather large steps, but in situations where more accuracy is required, the number is increased automatically. The minimum number of substeps should be increased when you observe stability problems, for example, exploding particles with high viscosity values. In such a case, it is often better to work with rather high fixed steps. To get fixed steps, simply use the same values for both fields. Substeps are also related to the current FPS rate, and with higher frame rates, the number of substeps can be decreased. But why? This becomes obvious when we calculate the length of a time step with a simple formula. With a rate of 25 frames per second and a fixed substep of 100, the length is 0 0.0004. With a frame rate of 100, the result is 0 0.0001. When we consider the time step as a measure for accuracy, we can see that the second result is four times more accurate. This also means that for the scene with 100 frames per second, a time step of 25 is enough to achieve the same level of accuracy. The following formula shows the relation. The length of the chosen min and max substeps is also displayed in the messages window. If the value is too high, you get a warning and reflow suggests a maximum substep. Now you know everything you need about time steps and how to control them. But please bear in mind that all these considerations are only relevant for fluid simulations. Reflow's Richard and Softbody Solver uses time steps as well, but here the value is adjusted with a quality slider on the currency page. It is not ruled by the general substep settings. So if you want to increase a Richard body simulation's accuracy, please do not increase Reflow's substep's values. In fact, 
it is even possible to use a fixed value of 1 for pure, rigid and soft body simulations. Hybrido and its secondary elements have their own time step controls, but they are also influenced by the general substeps. The general values can be seen as a higher ranking master instance. We recommend visiting Reflow's technical documentation. Under Time and Simulation, you can find a description of how the different settings work together. Another thing that is not so easy to understand for beginners concerns a computer's number of cores and CPUs. Modern computers have 4, 8 or even 12 cores per CPU and they are perfectly suited for reflow simulations. The problem is, the computer power does not scale linearly. In other words, an 8-core computer is not twice as fast as a machine with 4 cores with the same specifications. Even more important in terms of simulations is how Reflow uses a computer's resources. With low-resolution fluid simulations in particular, you can observe that Reflow uses only a fraction of the built-in cores. This is not a malfunction, but a very sensible way of using a computer's resources. Please take a look at the illustration. There, you can see that Reflow subdivides the simulation step into several processes and sends them to the computer's CPUs. It takes a certain amount of time to split the simulation and it also takes some time to compute the particle's behavior. With very few particles, the preparation step can even take longer than the simulation step. This is very inefficient and therefore, Reflow does not exploit the machine's full power. The result is that some cores remain idle and the total CPU load is just around 10 or 20%. With an increasing number of particles, the ratio between preparation and simulation time becomes better, and Reflow uses all cores. The hybrid panel of Reflow simulation options contains everything you need to optimize this type of simulation. Similar to the previously discussed general page, Hybrido also provides different subset settings. The first category is responsible for Hybrido's core fluid. The core fluid is what you get from a Hybrido simulation without splashes, foam or mist. Compared to the max substeps value of the general section, the Hybrido substep is really small. If you encounter stability or collision problems, the value can be increased, but please bear in mind that this action will change the fluid's behavior. Strictness is also related to hybrid or substeps. Maybe you've already found out that Reflow's hybrid or solver uses a grid with cells. Each cell has a certain size and contains the fluid's particles. When strictness is 1, a particle will not move more than one cell in the current time step. Lower values mean that the solver is less strict and a particle can cover a longer distance. The default value works well for most applications. The timescale parameter is a very quick method to accelerate or decelerate hybrid of fluids. Values greater than 1 will make the fluid faster, and values smaller than 1 have a decelerating effect. The settings for hybrid's pressure solver and the transport steps can be left untouched. The only exceptions are scenes where you get a warning that the pressure solver did not behave correctly. Most probably you will not notice any effect, but if you want to get rid of this message, just increase the max iterations value. A value between 10 and 20% of the default is normally enough. The pressure solver, by the way, controls the fluid compressibility. Hybrid or secondary elements include splashes, foam and mist, and they are controlled by the equal name solver. For these fluid types, you can also define min and max substeps.
Reflow's OpenCL implementation can only be used with hybrid or simulations, and at the current stage, it should be considered an experimental technique. The greatest obstacle with GPU support is the huge variety of graphic boards and drivers. It is technically not possible to consider every configuration. Therefore, we cannot guarantee that your graphic card can be used with Reflow, even if it fulfills the requirements. The impact of the graphic board and simulation time varies strongly and depends on many different factors, but the effect of OpenCL becomes more and more visible with an increasing number of hybrid particles. Before you start enabling the bridge to your GPU for the first time, you should take a look at the system information. The button opens a window with all relevant data about your system's OpenCL capabilities. The most important requirement is OpenCL version 1.1. Unfortunately, boards with earlier versions are not supported. Once you have checked that your graphic card can be used, all you have to do is to enable the Use OpenCL GPU option. The According CPU option can be left disabled. Use OpenCL Accelerator is most probably inactive on your system, unless you are the proud owner of a dedicated board. These devices are sold separately. If your graphic board is supported, you should notice a boost in simulation speed. If it is not supported, you will see a slight increase in simulation time, typically a few seconds per frame. In this case, we recommend updating the card's drivers. This could fix the problem, but unfortunately, there is no guarantee that the device can be used then. As mentioned before, there is only a moderate decrease in simulation time with low resolution hybrid scenes. The reason is that the GPU only contributes to the particle based parts of the simulation. Other parts, like the creation of the fluid's distance field or displacement, do not benefit from the GPU. Currenty is the name of Reflow's Richardin soft body solver. On the Currenty page, you will find a handful of parameters to adjust the solver's basic requirements. Quality is responsible for simulation's accuracy. You can choose from values between 0 and 100, which is the highest level. Simulations with prefractured objects are very common in today's visual effects, and they are very appealing. But there is one issue that can be observed once the pieces come to rest. From time to time, some fragments seem to have a life of their own. There is a slight trembling that cannot be eliminated. The chittering parameter has been added to remove this unwanted behavior effectively. With the slider, you can adjust the amount of tremble easily. A value of zero means that the objects have lost all of their remaining energy and they are motionless. With 100, you will still see a more or less strong trembling. Of course, the chittering parameter does not only work with prefetched elements, but with any scene where objects should come to rest completely. Last but not least, there is a characteristic object properties area. Since the concept behind these parameters is best explained with the help of an example, we will put this off until the upcoming Richard Body lessons.